Last year, I played through and reviewed Marvel's Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4. It was a fun game that played very well, but had some narrative issues, some of which were iffy at the time of the game's initial release, and had aged even worse by the time that George Floyd had died, or I should say, had been murdered by a police officer. So now we have a new expansion for the game, focusing on Miles Morales, who at the end of last game of the first game developed his powers, and now this one this it centers him in the game story. Now the question becomes, can this new game with the new protagonist address some of the main game's significant narrative hiccups? First off, Spider-Man Miles Morales, being an expansion of the main game, actually technically Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, um, being that expansion and being built off the core gameplay, has everything that worked out of the main game's gameplay right out of the gate. The web-slinging, the fundamental combat and stealth mechanics, all of those were rock-solid in the core game, and they're still solid now because they didn't change them. It ain't broke, don't fix it. There aren't any dramatic sea changes in terms of how these mechanics work either, it's just some tweaks related to how they articulate, specifically related to Miles' personal power set and how that differs from Peter's. Those articulations go into two main areas. One is bioelectricity, or as it's called, venom powers, with a small v, because there is the whole matter of the alien symbiote in the room, and it is important to be precise, and invisibility. Miles has his, as mentioned, various Venom attacks that let him do a amped up attack on a group opponent or group of opponents, amped up because it's bioelectric, get it? Um, which, with skill upgrades, can spread out to additional opponents on top of that. These range from dash attacks that can close the distance from an opponent or to an opponent in a minute to big ground pound attacks that hit everyone in a blast radius. The invisibility powers change up the way stealth sequences work, allowing the player, when they are spotted, but before the alert is kicked on, to activate invisibility and quickly move away from whatever opponent they uh, take out before the invisibility wears off, and also allowing them to take out opponents who the enemy would theoretically have line of sight on, um, but otherwise you'd still be able to take them out because, hey, somebody took them out, but nobody can see who who done it. That sort of thing. That said, a few of my favorite gadget powers are missing here. In particular, Miles only has four web gadgets. Webbing, a gravity weapon that bunches opponents together, likely to be a perfect target for the ground pound, with an electric mine, which can stun a maser knock them out entirely if attached to a power source before detonation, and holographic decoys that, decoys that can actually damage enemies, and can also spread confusion among them, or draw some off so you can focus your attention on a particular problem. Now, Peter's trip mine web, which would detect when an enemy walked in front of it, grab them, and web them to the wall, sadly isn't present in this game. The electric mine is the closest we have to that, but... It's, that's also kind of a variant of a different mine web attack from the main game, so it just feels like a nerf. And it's a bummer, because it was my favorite web gadgets. I used it a lot in the stealth sections of the main game, and it was just tons of fun to web in it, to use one trip mine to web an enemy to a wall, another enemy would come to investigate and get caught himself by another one that I planted near in an open spot nearby. It was just what chef's kiss wonderful and then there's the matter of the story marvel spider-man was legitimately criticized for the elements of the plot that were described as being copaganda between spidey's borderline official working relationship with the nypd on top of the cringy spider cop bits the use of mass surveillance towers created by oscorp which is, in the Marvel Universe, the third least trustworthy corporation behind Roxxon and Hammer Industries, as the game's version of your Ubisoft unlock stuff on the map tower, which the player got access to not by taking control of, but by fixing, a valid response from players was to look at the story and go, what in the actual hell? By contrast, while... Miles is now deceased in this universe, Dad Jefferson was a cop, the game generally doesn't have Miles getting that buddy-buddy with the NYPD. He'll do side quests helping out EMTs and firefighters, but is never generally directly working to assist 
the police, aside with a few crime and process calls related to stopping high-speed chases. The general vibe for whenever the police show up is at minimum, oh, you better clear out, the cops are coming. Where things get a little messy are with the antagonists. Once again, without having to say anything directly about the militarization of the police, rather than having the police directly be antag themselves be directly antagonistic, we instead put Roxxon Energy, who I mentioned earlier, as the clear-cut villains with their heavily armed corporate security in, um, in the place of militarized law enforcement. However, the writers are clearly intending to use Roxxon Security as that analog, complete with a part where citizens film Roxxon attempting to execute a unarmed, mostly helpless Spider-Man, in this case Miles, with Roxxon Security responding by preparing to turn their weapons on the citizenry, only to be stopped by Miles' invisibility, power, invisibility powers activating for the first time. And then there's our other antagonist group, the Underground, a seemingly dead sec esque group led by the Tinkerer. I said seemingly because over the course of the game, the, the narrative develops that apparently only the Tinkerer themselves, I'm not giving away their identity because it's a bit of a spoiler, has any sort of activist ambitions, and the group is instead established as being more of one that wants to take up the void left by Fisk being incarcerated, the demons kind of collapsing after... Um, Martin Lee was taken down, and Tombstone Gang also being having been taken down in the last game, and is only equipped to do so due to the Tinkerer's expertise, and the hacktivist part is strictly related to their motivations and their motivations alone. Um, that development feels like a transparent decision made basically to give the player a reason to not stress out or be annoyed over beating up a group which otherwise you might be more inclined to team up with and try to persuade to get on your side rather than um, being constantly in confrontation with them. In all, I like this game, and I do want to spend more time playing as Miles in a future Spider-Man game like this one, either with like a shifting character perspective kind of thing as was done with Grand Theft Auto V, or um, with different missions have you playing as like with a equal balance between different missions having you playing as Miles and Peter however they want to do this or just have just the next game just be Miles was the lead with maybe a, if they're going to have Peter in there as Spider-Man in a in a, way, in a prominent manner at all having Peter's missions be smaller side missions much as was the case with Miles in, in the first game. In either case, I want to play as more Miles, and I love this gameplay. I'd like to see them do more of this, possibly also with more of New York outside of Manhattan. I also do kind of hope that we get... I mean, I don't want to have them necessarily rush, like, like cram too many other spider people into the game, but I do hope that this framework does get borrowed and adapted to make room for other spider characters as well. In particular, it comes to mind is um, Silk and um, Spider Gwen or Ghost Spider, depending on which where you're at in the ser in the continuity and what codename she receives. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>